Hi, I'm Michael Chiarello, and you're watching Talk with Audrey. Welcome to the show. Each holiday season, as we strive to cook the perfect holiday meal, if you're the home chef, you might be wondering how to cook the perfect turkey. Well, this year, I decided to get advice from an expert. Chef Michael Chiarello, Emmy Award-winning TV chef, restaurant owner, and author, joins me from his kitchen in the Napa Valley with his secrets to making the perfect turkey. And he's also going to tell us how to turn those leftovers into delicious day-after meals. Thanks, Audrey. Well, turkey is just, just really like a big chicken, and we cook chicken a couple times a week. So I use some of the same approach. Now, when it comes, when it, when it comes to turkeys, I'm not a fan of the gigantic turkey at all. Um, I don't think they're that tasty, and all, you, and all you get is two drumsticks. So rather than a 125 pound bird, I'd rather do two 12 pound birds. And I find that the, the, that the turkey roasts sooner, that you can stagger the roasting. You can put one in 15 minutes after the other. Everybody can eat, be eating hot turkey, and you get twice as many parts. How do we prepare the turkey for roasting? I think there's lots of people that butter up and they lather up their bird with butter. I'm not a big fan of that at all. I'm actually Italian, so I like olive oil, but any oil will do. I like to rub my turkey with olive oil, salt and pepper on both sides. The, um, um, and I also like my bird to be out at room temperature you know, for, for about an hour. People get a little freaked out about that, um, but you shouldn't be at all. A more room temperature bird's going to cook more tender and more evenly. And you want to season evenly as well. So salt and pepper all around. I don't do anything else fancy. Um, the, um, except I like the inside of my bird to have some aromatics. So I use some of my favorite herbs. I have some rosemary and sage. You can do parsley, thyme, any of your favorite herbs. And you shove them right in. And you could do whatever. I can, I'm just going to put a bay leaf in there. You can put all kinds of citrus in there if you like. You could put oranges and lemons and kumquats. Uh, you could put persimmons, any other citrus if you, if you like to. Now, when it comes to trussing, I do not like to truss for the simple reason this little spot in the turkey, uh, right in the thigh, that stays a little too rosy. Right? When I leave the legs open, I find that the thighs cook a little more evenly for me, which is really, really key. Now, when it comes to putting them in the oven, a lot of people don't have all the turkey set up in the oven racks and everything. And I actually don't prefer an oven rack. I hate to clean those things. What I do is I take some celery and carrots and I cut them long. And I let them be my rack, my turkey rack. And that goes right on top of the vegetables. The vegetables roast with the turkey at the same time. But my next big problem, Audrey, is, is the turkey drippings that we really, really want to make the most flavorful gravy possible right, end up getting all burned up and you can't use them. They don't taste good. So what I do is I take one of my favorite natural chicken broths. Uh, Progresso makes my favorite box broth. And I just pour it in the, in the inside. This way, as the turkey's roasting, all of the turkey juices and droppings go right into the gravy or right into the stock and then I can make a perfect, perfect gravy from there. This goes right into the oven. It's going to roast it moist and flavorful and we're going to have the most incredible gravy you can imagine. You chefs make it look so simple. It is very simple. And the vegetables are roasting in there um, uh, and making your gravy stock at the same time. So when your turkey's resting, you're going to have a gravy that skips the entire step of having to take the giblets and make a turkey stock and all that. It's fantastic. To stuff or not to stuff the turkey? What do you think? Stuffing doesn't take as long as a bird does. Mm -hmm. And depending on, I don't like that whole time temperature thing where you have eggs mixed with bread put inside a protein. So as a chef, I try to keep it a little safer. But I actually like the way the bird roasts better. I think stuffing's perfectly safe. I've done it for a long time. But I think uh, it's just counterintuitive to think you put a dry mixture inside a wet bird and not think it's going to be pulling the moisture out from the, the breast cavity of the bird. And then, Michael, there are always leftovers. What do you suggest for the day after? Now, when you get to the day after, I don't know what it's like in your house, but we always end up with like another 25 people going around, football outside, kids coming and going, friends coming and going. Rather than trying to leave the food out cold, room temperature all day and have it not be very good, I actually turn it into a big old pot of soup, my, uh, my day after turkey soup. The only thing you have to really cook for this is you have to dice up some carrots, onions, and celery, and you give them a saute and some olive oil, and then I take plenty of natural chicken broth again. This is where box broth really comes in handy during the holiday. You take your vegetables, you add your box broth, 
If you have more people coming, you just grab another box of broth and stretch it out a little bit. Then you take all the leftovers, whether it's turkey, green beans, sweet potatoes, whatever vegetables and meat you have left over, you dice them all up, you bring this up to a boil, you, you drop in a couple of bay leaves, right, and then all the vegetables and meat go in, and then I add some pastina, a little teeny, the smallest pasta you can find. 15 minutes later, the soup's cooked together, the pasta's cooked, you can leave it on low, people can come by, grab a ladle of soup, go by the TV, watch some ball games, go shopping, go out and play some football, and the soup stays warm all day and keeps everybody kind of filled uh, with a delicious day after turkey soup. We have in front of us a couple of other of our favorites that we've done. We have a, we have a turkey pastina risotto that we, uh, with pumpkin, roasted pumpkin, served back into a pumpkin shell that you can try. We have a winter squash or pumpkin soup with some toasted panko on it. Then we have uh, kind of turkey for two, which I love, kind of a turkey scallopini with yeah. a pumpkin ravioli and a cranberry brown butter. You can find all these recipes and a whole lot more value at progressobroth.com. Thanks, Chef. We'll see you next time you're in the Napa Valley. Thanks, Audrey. Look for Michael's new cookbook, Bottega, and catch him on the Cooking Channel and Top Chef Masters on Bravo. I'm Audrey Adams. Thanks for watching.